Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. So today we are going to discuss the next question of our agriculture optional answer writing practice series. But before starting the question and discussing it, I must let you know that we have we are going to start the aspire for agriculture test series. Aspire for agriculture test series that will be for agriculture optional. So this series is going to start from 3rd of November and only few seats are left. So if you want to join, you can message us on WhatsApp number 77818-33440 for any queries regarding this test series. And it will have 14 full tests. Okay, that in that 8 will be of sectional syllabus and 6 will be of full syllabus. Okay, 14 full tests and the price will be only rupees 9.99. And every copy of your, every answer of your will be very well evaluated. So please do consider it and join it. And for any queries regarding it, if you want to ask anything about the test series, you can message us on this number, on this WhatsApp number 77818-33440. So let's start the practice, answer writing practice now. So today's question is, disc, briefly discuss the crop management practices for for stabilizing yield in dryland areas okay so we have to discuss the crop management practices through which we can stabilize yield in dryland areas and in the second part of the question we have to enlist the crops with their characteristics suitable for dryland agriculture so this is the question and i think a lot of questions have been asked previously with regards to dryland area and rainfed areas i always let tell, let, tell, tell you that dryland and rainfed both are similar farmings and every year you will find a question of any one of two. Either you will find a question of dryland agriculture or you will find a question about rent-fed agriculture. So, you should be knowing this very properly. So, let's start. How can we approach the answer? So, in introduction, you can write that in India around, first of all, what are dryland and rent-fed areas? Look, classify the areas into two parts. First one is irrigated where some irrigation methods are present either it could be or you can say artificial irrigation methods are present it could be through pumps there could be uh, canals etc etc there could be various irrigation projects by government and other types of are non-irrigated non in non-irrigated we have you can divide here in rain fed and dry land okay Rainfed and dry land. Here, non irrigated means not artificial methods of irrigation, not irrigation projects are not available. Okay. But rainfed means it is good. Here, there is good rainfall and the crops are directly dependent on rainfall. So, here the rainfall is good. And in dry land, here also we have no artificial irrigation methods present, but the rainfall is also low here. Okay. The rainfall is also low here. Although it is also dependent on rain, but the rainfall is low. Here the rainfall is less than 75 centimeter or you can say around 75 centimeter. And in rainfall, I think it's about 100, it is more than 100 centimeter. It's 115 centimeter which we consider around. So these two things keep in mind. So this is a basic difference between rainfall and dry land also that in rainfall, although there is no artificial irrigation methods, but the rainfall is good. In dry land, there is no artificial methods also and the rainfall is also not that good. So I hope you understand this dry land and rainfall and using these things, you can introduce, you can write some points about dry land agriculture. And we know that India in around 50% of land is the, those land where it, those where irrigation are present and around 50% of land it, this is just a round figure around 50% of land are either rainfed or dry land so this is a classic data which we can use in introduction of several answers so i hope you understand this now let's move to the body of the question the first part is the Crop management practices for stabilizing yield in dryland area. So, what are those crop management practices? We will see. And I think these are common practices which you all should know. So, first practices in dryland is we will focus for soil conservation. Okay. We will focus on soil conservation. We will implement various practices such as contour plowing. 
contour plowing, terracing. We will do cover cropping. It is it is as per our land to protect our soil from erosion and and uh, first of all soil conservation means to protect from erosion to protect from erosion maintain soil structure maintain soil structure and also maintain soil moisture so this is what i want to convey here from soil conservation and using these practices such as contour plowing terracing cover cropping we can maintain structure maintain moisture prevent from erosion so all these things can be done secondly all because it is a dryland area so water management is the key we should focus for focus on water management so here we can construct various bunds construct bunds we can construct farm ponds farm construct bunds construct constructs farm ponds we should use micro irrigation methods if you are irrigating also such as drip irrigation sprinkler irrigation etc etc to protect water and properly manage water because here the water quantity is already less and there is no scope for wastage of water third we will do proper crop selection so which type of crops will we select we will select drought resistant crops generally which are suited for local conditions to so generally go for drought resistant crops because these crops will have deep roots they will have a particular short growing soja season okay drought resistant crops for example the best crop here can be grown is millets millets so these are the things we can do we can do a proper crop selection next we can do crop rotation we should diversify our cropping patterns crop rotation and diversification so that our risk becomes low suppose we are dependent on one crop and that crop fails especially in dryland areas where the chances of failure is so high so it will uh, move uh, it will uh, tender a huge amount of loss on us but if we will keep rotating the crops we will diversify the crops with other crops so it will help us in it will help us in stabilizing yield and avoiding the risks also okay so here we can use for example you can give out intercropping we can do intercropping where some cereal crops for example some millets can be intercropped with pulses okay use pulses in intercropping because they will fix nitrogen also and they are good they can be uh, drought resistant also so this can be done we see we can do mulching and we all know that mulching has a huge effect on two things first one to uh, re retain moisture in soil or you can say conserve moisture in soil and secondly to reduce weed growth it reduces weed growth so these two things will be properly done in mulching so that can be done we have to use proper uh, fertilizer management fertilizer or nutrient management would be proper we should focus on uh, various kinds of organic fertilizers we can focus for organic manures farmyard manures even if we are using chemical fertilizer we can look for slow releasing chemical fertilizers where efficiency is more slow releasing fertilizers such as neem coated urea we have golden urea or sulfur coated urea so all these things can be used so nutrient management is another important thing we have to do pest and weed management here we can do ipm that is integrated pest management or we can use integrated weed management that is using of cultural biological mechanical methods for managing of pests and weed so that can be done we need to adjust the timing of planting the timing of planting should be proper we should adjust it to the requirement of moisture because the rainfall in dry land areas will be for a particular season particular time so we have to time our plant on that way that it coincides with onset of rains and it get the particular amount of moisture so timing of planting is there we can use technologies now through precision agriculture we can use gis we can use remote sensing because in precision agriculture we will get accurate data of how much inputs to use suppose this is our field and through precision agriculture we can get to know how much 
fertilizers will require in this area this area that is our field can be divided into compartments and a proper efficiency of nutrients can be reached here so precision agriculture is the key obviously next community engagement it is the key proper extension proper community engagement if there are small and marginal farmers we should uh, motivate them to uh, join cooperatives form farmer producer organizations because all these things can be help knowledge sharing is the key training is the key so all these things are common things which we can do to stabilize yields in dryland areas and i think you understand all these things now let's move to the second part of the question that is asking us about the some crops which are suitable for dryland areas okay crops and we have also discussed the characteristics of crops suitable for dryland area so which are the crops which are suitable for dryland area areas first obviously we have millets for example all the types of millets including sorghum bajra other things okay so because the proper characteristics when you see the millets are because they are quick growing they grow fastly quick growing secondly they are uh, drought resistant drought resistance they will provide you nutritious grains and they can be grown in marginal soils also grown in marginal soils so these are the things these are the characteristics of millets which make them an a very good crop in dryland areas secondly we can use various kinds of pulses such as pigeon pea because again it is deep rooted it will help in nitrogen fixation it will help in nitrogen fixation it is obviously drought resistance drought resistance it will provide high quantity of protein in the diet so it the, for the area for the people in dryland areas should prefer it another kind of pulses should be used also the chickpeas chickpeas can be used coffees can be used so all these have similar characteristics only okay they are deep rooted they are drought resistant they will fix nitrogen other things next we can use barley obviously it is again quick growing it is drought tolerant drought resistant and it can be also used as fodder so if the farmers which generally the farmers of dryland generally prefer animal husbandry so this can be used as fodder also so this can be done next crops which can be grown that is lentils can be grown again they are drought resistant they will improve soil fertility improve soil fertility so these are the common things which you should write next sesame can be used sesame can be used again it is drought resistance so one more characteristics if you want to add these crops is that they require minimum inputs minimum input and they are wild rich seeds so for wild seeds you can prefer sesame wild rich so i think we have discussed cereals also wild seeds also pulses also and different kinds of crops which can be grown in these dryland areas and we have discussed some common characteristics which help them to uh, sustain their uh, productivity in these areas okay so this is all i think you understand the both parts of the question and i think writing five six crops will be enough with characteristics so that is all for today and please do conclude your answer conclude your answer positively by writing how how, how can we improve our sustainability and productivity in dryland areas how can we help the farmers in dryland areas anything could be this a good conclusion and i hope you can write it nicely so that is all for today if you like it please press the like button please do share and please do subscribe it takes a lot of hard work to make such videos for you on regular basis and if you like if you share if you subscribe it motivates us to make more such videos for you regularly and please do join the test series because it will be very helpful and i can guarantee you that so that is all for today have a nice day thank you